Retired Dallas Deputy Police Chief Craig Miller joining us now to talk about this. Uh, Chief Miller now commands the Dallas ISD <clears throat> Police Department, excuse me. But while you were with Dallas Police, you responded to, it was it 75 officer-involved shootings? Yes, sir, 75. You, and, you, and you testify now as an expert on officer-involved shootings. So that's correct. That's why you're here, because you, you know how these things work and they're supposed to work. Okay, so we're going to roll the video and, and, and kind of refer to it at times. But as you've watched this yes. several times, give me your initial reaction. Maybe let's start, we'll go a couple directions, but let's start with what you saw happen and what the officer did wrong. Well, I think being objective first, yeah, you, well, you have to, I'm looking at it from, from several different pr perspectives. The officer obviously has his perspective. Uh, perception is reality for him. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in this situation, how many officers are there? Well, uh, they, I believe there were eight. There were multiple officers there. And this was the only officer who fired. That's correct. The number of shots that this officer fired. I think you did. 16. Yeah. Th then you have to look at what we in law enforcement use a term called force continuum, wh which basically is an escalation of force, which starts with the officer's presence and then goes all the way up to using deadly force. And in between there, you have various levels of, of, of force that you can use that include a, a taser or a stun gun, uh, along with OC or pepper spray, and then with the asp or the baton that the officers have prior to putting himself in a position to have to use deadly force. Officer, that, that vehicle that pulls up on the left, the, the SUV, kind of pulls around the car, the, uh, the squad car in the middle. When that, that passenger side door opens, his partner jumps out. From the time his partner gets on the ground to the shots fired, we don't know exactly when the driver got out. He's the shooter. But it was six seconds. Does that time frame bother you? Is that enough for the officer to assess what this guy is doing. I know you can use deadly force, not just if you think this young man with a knife is going to attack you, but if you think he's going to go down the road and attack somebody else. But are there indications that that was going to happen? Was the situation assessed? Well, in the video, I don't see the overt motion by him towards the officer. Now, r realize that it took a grand jury a year looking at this case to make a decision. And now we've seen this video for just a couple of hours. And there are a lot of things that are going on. There's a lot of moving parts that are involved here. There's a lot of witness statements. There's a lot of video, uh, from what I understand, not just the video in the squad cars, but other video as well. And so I, I think initially you look at it, and we in the public say, oh, wow, he looks like he's the officer certainly being over aggressive in this situation. And I think that we need to know more about what actually the officer's perception was. It seems like they're closing. That We talk about a spatial rule. Uh, this young man seems to be kind of almost veering away from them, and they are closing on him. They are reducing that distance. In doing that, are they putting themselves in, in jeopardy and maybe making them more likely to have to use, if their guns are out already, they don't have many options, right? Well, they could be. They, they, are, they are escalating the situation when we need to be looking at de-escalating the situation. Uh, they know they've got this person here who's, who has a knife. They know that he used a knife on, a, I believe, a, a squad car's wheel earlier. Uh, they, they know he appears to be violent by his mannerisms. And so to take a tactical approach of backing off, trying to de-escalate, trying to not encroach the situation, I think would be the most advantaged uh, way to approach this. How might a defense attorney uh, defend? You, I'm sure you've seen it all. You've, you've testified for prosecution and defense, I assume, and police shooting. What would you say the officer did, did correctly? Or, or were there, are there any things that we can't see that you might see here that say, well, I understand why this might have been his thought process? Well, first, we need to understand there's a difference between policies and procedures and the Constitution. I think that's the first thing we need to look at. And this officer may have violated his policies with his police department. I don't know what their policies were. I'm sure they've got a procedure in place that tells them to not encroach upon a person in a situation like this, and he did. Now, that gets back to the perception versus reality. What did this officer see? Not what you and I are seeing and not what another officer there is seeing. Mm -hmm. What did he see? Did he see this person make that affirmative gesture, that overt motion with that knife towards him? In his mind, he may have. <clears throat> then he has to answer why then did he shoot and then if he shot why did he need to continue to shoot 16 rounds at this person those are the types of questions that are going to have to be answered and will be answered in the criminal trial and you mentioned how long it took more than a year this happened October 2014 why does that take so long are they I mean really they've got testimony from the people there and the video uh, do they not 
are they not comfortable with charging an officer with, mur with murder? Do they go over that over and over before they do that? It, it just seems like it took a long time. Well, uh, it did take a long time, but I think you want to get it right. And, and listening to the state's attorney, uh, that, that's what they talked about. They wanted to get it right. You know, initially they brought in the... Uh, the people from the FBI to help the local mm -hmm. entities. Uh, the state took the case. You know, there's going to be several months lag time involved there just trying to get the, the feds working with the local PD so that everybody can be on the same page. But you've got a lot of video. You've got a lot of squad cars here. You break a, you break a situation down like this frame by frame, literally by hundreds of a second. What did the motions of the, the, the person in this case who was killed, what did his motions look like or what could they have looked like to possibly to the officer? Then you've got the testimony. The, the, and so the process is going to be lengthy. You've got different breaks. There could have been people, the grand jury who were sick. There could have been right. officers okay. who weren't available. So there could have been a myriad of things that contributed Before to that. Before we move on, and, and people, there are, there's some protests happening tonight and people are going to get concerned about this and they're also going to watch this video on YouTube tonight, you know, people will watch it. I do have one specific thing about what I saw and I don't understand. It looked like the, the young man with the knife spun or something like that. Now, did he spin or do you think that was the first time he was hit? People will see the video and they'll see this kind of thing and that might be some kind of an overt gesture or maybe he, that was the time he was first hit. Can you tell? No, I don't think you can tell. I think that's part of what the autopsy would reveal is, is there, it's going to show you where the, the, the bullets went into the body mm -hmm. and how they struck that body. Uh, you know, they may be able to detect what was the first round that hit him. If so, oh, then yeah. they can maybe tell that. There's always going to be a situation where it looks like an officer shot someone in the back when many times it wasn't at all as it appeared, you know, to the officer and what he saw and what the suspect did. Uh, as we wrap this up, I do want to get into your, your first initial reaction when I, I, you sat here and I sat here, here and I said, boy, you know, what do you think? And you said, you know, basically doesn't look good. It, it does not look good for the police officer from your expert perspective. Yeah, initially, I don't have a lot of the information, but, but when you see it and you see multiple officers there, you only see one officer. You see that officer firing multiple rounds. Uh, perception is reality. He was there a very short period of time, six seconds before he put himself in that situation. Did he violate policies and procedures in the way that he approached it? I don't know their policies and procedures, but I do know that we have to be objective. As I said, it took a grand jury a year looking at all this information before they finally came out with an indictment. And people need to understand an indictment is not of uh, an admission. It's not a conviction not, either, not, right? Not a finding of guilt. There's going to yeah. be a court, and the court's going to hear this stuff. They're, it's going to hear everything that's said. It's going to see the videos. It's going to get the information. And, you know, we're going to deal with the facts and deal with the Constitution. And as we know, grand juries sometimes take their cues from prosecutors, and they are more likely to charge, maybe not a police officer, but will a jury, that's another leap that, that the prosecution is going to have to make, convincing a jury to ch ch convict a police officer for murder. No, that's absolutely right. And if the officer did wrong and it's found out that a, a jury determines that, that, that he's guilty of the crime, then he'll face the punishment. But right now, we've only got an indictment, and that is not a finding of guilty in a court system. Okay. So let it play itself out. Let's see how it works. Let, let's see exactly what's involved. Let, let's find out what takes place in the courtroom, not what took place in a closed hearing at a grand jury, right. and we'll go move from there. Okay. Chief Craig Miller, thanks for coming down. Appreciate your perspective. Thank you. Yes, sir.